Hey, pottery peeps. We are making hand-built birdhouses today. Um, I've got a couple of tricks for you. I am a huge fan of um, Learn Fire Arts, Michael Harbridge. He's on Facebook. I don't know if he's on Instagram. You'll have to check. Um, the website's Learn Fire Arts, and I will put the link in the description. He has a whole bunch of these different style molds. I think I have all the circles um, or spheres. And I use these a lot for, if you've watched the fairy house, um, some of the fairy house videos I've done, I've used um, some of the smaller ones to make the fairy houses. Um, I did make this years ago, or not years ago, last year? I don't know, my whole last year is just a blur. <clears throat> and that was made out of the big one. And I put a hole in here so I could do um, a branch and put it in there. Just haven't done it yet. <laughs> haven't gotten around to that. So this, and it's got holes in the bottom for drainage. Um, and then, so this was made with this mold here. But today I also have um, these gourd molds. So I'm making the birdhouses out of the gold gourd molds. I've already put one in here and it's drying. And then I'm going to do a smaller one out of this one. By the way, this one makes a really cute fairy house too. <laughs> anyway, this is a very fun way to um, make hand-built items like the fairy houses and the bird houses. Heck, like I said, said before, you're limited to your imagination on what you can make out of these. I have already rolled out a slab. I rolled out a three-eighths of an inch slab and I've rolled in texture. One of the things I do if I'm using these, I'm taking advantage of the fact and using lots of texture. I love texture and especially in something like this. So this will, um, actually if you can see the birdhouses up there. Also a lot of you pointed out that my holes are too big for the birdhouses. I'm in Utah, um, high in the mountain about 4,500 square or 45 feet above sea level. <clears throat> We don't have a lot of little birds here. We have, our birds are more mid-size, like bluebirds and mockingbirds and, and um, starlings and that kind of thing. We don't have the little finches or, I think the smallest birds we have, and I could be wrong, but the smallest birds I've seen are the hummingbirds. We've got really mean hummingbirds. <laughs> You'll have to let me know if your hummingbirds are mean, <laughs> but for eating a lot of sugar water, they, um, they're mean. Anyway. So um, I've never seen hummingbirds um, nest in birdhouses. So far, no one's moved into my birdhouses either. And another um, tip about birdhouses that Monique from Bonaire shared with me that I needed to pass on. If you're doing a ceramic birdhouse, make sure you're putting it in the shade because in the summer times, um, it can get hot. We don't want to fry the little birdies. So I'm going to move you over and we're going to get started. So I rolled out my texture, and I'll probably use, I don't know, three different sizes of these cutters to, f to fill it in. Maybe I'll use the same size. Probably that size. <clears throat> so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna go around and it's directional. So that's another thing I need to pay attention to. So let's see, maybe I will start out. These are just, you know, I just do it whatever feels right in the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut. And like I've said before, if you're, this is not good for anybody who has OCD. <laughs> The more random you can keep a design like this, the better it looks when you're done. Oh, I like that one. That one's got the hummingbird front and center. So I'm going to start and push them in. This one, since it's the first one, I actually wanna have it start at the bottom and actually be going up. <laughs> And I tend to work on both of them at the same time versus, um, I've seen Michael Harbridge do it and he's done both where 
he just finishes one and then he'll start the other but one thing too since you are hand building and you are going to layer these guys they can get pretty heavy versus the um wheel thrown ones aren't quite as heavy because you're you're throwing throwing it consistently but these ones you're going to be building that clay and so when you push the clay I don't push too hard I don't want to destroy that texture that I've got but I will smooth that into the the piece next to it and this one since it's smaller isn't going to take as much clay which is good so I just overlap them and then smooth them in and I just keep doing that and like I said the more random you can keep it the better it's also why I tend to do different sizes rather than all the same size You can also make your own molds. Find a shape that you like, even bowls in the kitchen. Take a take clay, bisque your own mold. You know, make it out, make the mold with clay, fire it, bisque fire it, and then you've got yourself a mold. It looks like I'm going to have a visitor. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm going to go for lunch or anything. What are you going to go for lunch? What do you feel? Uh, no, I got stuff. Don't worry about it. All right, so it looks like these two sizes are gonna work the best together for this shape. I'm not gonna to worry too much about this up here. I've used this mold before, and if I fill that in at the top, it causes me problems. And I plan to um, do a pulled handle for the top, like I've done with the wheel thrown versions. So you just go around and you just fill it in. It's kind of fun too because if you're not paying attention too much to how you're placing them or the design, you get surprised when you take them out of the mold. Let's see. And I'll glaze these with a celadon so that it picks up all this really fun texture. And I don't know where I got this rolling pin. Um, a lot of times, this is Sharon Hoppy's pin. And it's the hummingbird or, I don't know if it's called the hummingbird pin or like cherry blossom pin. And I'll put her a link. It's an older one, and I don't know if she still has it, but I'll link to her website. All right, so pressing those in, and let's go to a smaller size. So I can get these areas here. And right there, I'm going to have way too much clay. You're not going to see it. So, I will cut that off. That will help with the weight. So it's not quite so heavy. You could probably roll it thinner, but then you might have problems because you are still pressing it into a mold. So you still need some clay to work with there. Plus you'd have to work really fast so that it doesn't um, dry out on you. All right. So we've got this one pretty much done. And then I'll show you how I put them together. So let's go ahead and finish this other side.
I don't use any water. I don't score and slip this. My clay, um, well, technically it's not fresh out of the bag, but it's, it's basically clay that I've wedged up from another project and using, but it's still fairly, it's not wet, wet, but it's still fairly um, moist. Oh, I don't like that word. <laughs> so anyway, you know what I mean. It's still, you can still work with it. <laughs> I don't know of anybody who likes that word. Anyway, okay. So I will just smooth it all in like that. I do tend to come over here at the bottom. I will cover this bottom with something decorative, but I need to join these pieces. And so I'll need to cut away that. So what I need now is a couple of coils. Let's see if we can actually get this thing to make a coil. Cause like I said, it's fairly, fairly wet or fairly, it's drying out. <laughs> Where is a sponge? All right, so I'm just gonna, let me actually take this. Wedge this up and put it back in my bag. One thing I do too, when I have all this clay that I've done, I will dip it into my bucket of water. Just do a dip so it's wet. And then I throw it back in my bag. And then I can wedge it up and uh, use it again. And it's a lot easier to work with and it doesn't go into the reclaim and I have to reclaim it. Too much water. For those of you who have seen me do this, um, when you're doing a coil, if you wet your table, it helps your coil from drying out. Mine's a little too wet. Should have a towel over here. So I'm just gonna pull out a fairly long one actually. It doesn't have to be perfect. I am not, I'm into progress, not perfection. No perfection. In fact, I find that things that aren't perfect in the studio turn out even better. So now I'm gonna just make some loops and I will push them into the clay. I'm not gonna worry too much about that top, but I'm gonna loop all the way around the form. And they probably have them up. You only need them up for maybe half an inch or an inch, and these are probably too tall, but it'll work. So when I have the loops in, I'll do the same thing. I'll secure them to the one side. Because this is how we're going to join these guys. And Michael Harbridge on his Facebook has a lot of videos on this. This is how I learned to do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm a huge fan of what he sells on his site and also his um, Facebook group. Um, I believe he's still on Wednesday nights. He might have moved to Tuesday. So he, and he goes live on Facebook. And he shows all sorts of different things. You know what? These would be really cool. He does a lot of raccoon. These would be really cool raccoon. A lot of times, you know, stuff like this might not get used by the birds, <laughs> but they make fun garden decor. Okay, so now I'm going to put these guys together. I, I folded all those loops in like that. And then I'm going to line up the mold. And I've got too much clay. Hold on. I'm just going to squish that down. Otherwise, when I push it together, I could get a line I don't want. But then that also gives you an opportunity to do something decorative on the sides, which I might end up doing. So, if 
you've got stuff sticking up on the side too, just push that whole section in. And we're going to line them up and stick them together. Okay. Once you've got them together, his molds come with these uh, Velcro straps. They're really strong Velcro straps. And so, you just Velcro this sucker together, kind of tight, so that it just holds it. He also sells these sticks with a flashlight. My flashlight no longer works. I need to replace my batteries. <laughs> and it's got this ball on the end. So what you do is you put that, a lot of times I will start with my finger and join the sides that I can reach. So I'm laying all those coils onto the other side and smoothing them in. You probably, yeah, there's no way for you to see that. And then I will push this in there and use it to join those coils. So do one side, turn it around, do the other. He has two different size balls on this for the different size so you can get into the top of that and then I just smooth all those down okay this clay actually might be dry enough that I could open the mold but I'm gonna let it set up just to be on the safe side and I am going to save my pieces of clay with this design in case I want to use it when we undo that one. So let me grab some plastic. All right, so this other one, let's go ahead and open. This one's been sitting up for a while while I was building this one. So hopefully it's ready. I did the design on this one. It's the Scandi Birds by Clayshare, Jessica Putnam Phillips. This is her design. So I rolled the Scandi Birds in it. If you notice, I kind of stuck with um, a bird theme. I got hummingbirds on one, and I got the Scandi Birds on the other. So let's go ahead and open this to show you what we got. This is the fun part. It is a little bit, let me just actually set these here so they don't go rolling off. All right, so this is, he sells the gourds, I believe, in a set of three, and I have, a, this, I bought the set. So if you'll notice on the sides, I have um, some little holes, and I've got the line, kind of like when you do slip casting. But I do have all that beautiful design there. So what I'm going to do is I actually need something. Hold, oh, please. All right, let's try this again. I keep, anytime I replace sheets, I cut them up. And especially if you buy high cotton sheets like I do because you know you want to sleep really really nice <laughs> I um, cut them up and I use them in the studio so what I need is I need a chuck and so we're gonna make a chuck out of sour cream and some sheets because I'm gonna work on this bottom because I already know what I want to do with the bottom I had oh, let me grab my pieces I'd already cut out one of the flowers, so I'm going to put one of the flowers, because we're making a closed form. Same thing like we did 
with the wheel thrown pieces, um, we're making a we need a closed form. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise you up a little bit. <laughs> Sorry about that. I get to working and not paying attention to what the camera's doing. Since it's a one woman show here, I'm gonna go ahead and slip and score this flower. I got my bucket on a stool behind me here, or on the side of me. So I've slipped and scored this flower. I'm gonna set it where I want it. And now I know where to slip and score this guy. So we'll do that really well. I'm going to go ahead and trim off some pieces that I could see could be potentially sharp for in case a bird wants to move in. I'd be all for some birdie tenants. But I'm okay too if they're just decoration in the garden. That makes it fun too. I have um, three cats, <laughs> two dogs and three cats. So I understand if no bird wants to move in, they might consider it a hostile environment. <laughs> well, my cats have yet to catch a bird. They're more interested in the bugs and the moths than the snakes. We get gardener snakes, garter snakes here. Well, we have all sorts of snakes. Which is one of the reasons why I don't care for Utah. Alaska has no snakes. No snakes, no poisonous spiders. You know, just bears and wolves and <laughs> moose and, you know, lynx and... But you know what? I'd rather deal with them than snakes and spiders and all the stuff that's around here. I mean, Alaska has spiders, but no poisonous ones. My husband actually got bit by a brown recluse years ago and almost lost his leg. So, not a fan. Plus, there's black widows here. Oh, tell ya, they just look like pure evil. They're just, they're just freaky. Okay, off on one of my tangents. All right, so you'll see how I smooth that in. Because this is now our bottom. We didn't want an open bottom. And so after I get the bottom the way I want it. In fact, now's a good time to put some holes in the bottom. And I don't have my hole punch. Let me get, get a hole punch. You think you have everything you need when you get started on something. But, you know, there's always something you forget. At least I do. All right, just want to smooth some of that off of there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do, probably could have waited to do the punch. Actually, I'm going to wait. It's not quite set up enough. All right. Where is, yep, there it is, my foam. So I can, all right, now I need to address the sides of this so I can smooth them in but I um I do want to get these lines off but when I was rolling out the rolling pin it has these really decorative lines in the rolling pin and so I cut them out because I knew I was gonna to have to address this, so I thought it would be fun to actually use it. So that's what I'm gonna do. So, where is the... So I'm gonna slip and score this guy. And then slip and score the seam. So 
some water on there. This is why you need foam when you're working with something like this. Actually, is this directional? Nope. Yay. <laughs> kind of tough when things are directional. You have to pay attention. Not one of my... I'm always lost in my head. I don't pay attention well. I'm just going to set that in there and then bring this up where I want it over the seam and then I've got a fun decorative element that was in my rolling pin. I mean I didn't have to do anything different. And then I will Move this into the form. And do that on both sides. And then any place that I missed um, that's got a little gap or something where that seam was, I can fill it in this way. This little tool, geez, my favorite, favorite little tool. I don't know what it's called. I call it my little finger tool. <laughs> it's probably not correct. So, and then I will smooth this with my brush. And make sure I've got my joint down here too so it doesn't crack. Then I'll usually come back with a wet sponge and just kind of go over it just to make sure I didn't leave anything. And then, actually, hmm, I might leave that. It's kind of looking like a pear. Now we're gonna do this one. So I do make sure that there's no nothing standing up. around my flower that's actually really cute You also, with these, especially these hand-built ones, well, actually, even the wheel-thrown ones, you want to let them dry really slow. I put mine under plastic for a good week, if not longer, and then I slowly start to open up the plastic and uh, leave them just draped with plastic. If you find a little hole that doesn't want to be covered up, just add a little bit of clay. And 
we're just going to go over it with the sponge just to get the extra slip in any water. All right, so now I got to figure out where I want the hole. What's my front? What's my back? And I also need to figure this out. So I could easily put that together. And I just might, let's see, rather than pull a handle, I just might do this. I mean, it's got a strap that's connected to the whole thing. <laughs> it's strapped around this. It does, it looks a lot like a pear. So, let's see if it's long enough to do a hook. Yeah, no, not in love with it. So, let's go ahead and take this off. Just kind of fix this guy. So now, I tend to spend a lot of time looking at my pieces to see how I want to decorate them. I like this one where it's got the bird right there and the big flower, but then I have it here too. So maybe I do a hole down here. Well, let's figure out what we're going to do to hang it first. If you don't like pulling handles, you can do um, coils. Also, to wedge a small piece of clay, Put it in your hands and twist it, and it'll help get any air bubbles out. So let's see if we can actually show you how to do a coil. Clay's a little drier than I want. But that will actually help us out, because if I pull one, then I'm going to make the clay too wet. And might be too floppy. Also, if you tend to get squares, squares off, square off your coils, twist your coil and it'll put it back in the round. So, I'm going to make this end thinner and this end thicker. need to beef this up now because I've got it too thin. So Oh, that could be fun. I'm going to do that though. I got to get this a little wetter. Cuz my clay's cracking. and slip the top of this really well. In fact, I'm probably going to even add a coil just because 
I've got a really small coil here for the handle and I want a really good connection. We'll take a little bit of our clay here. I never know what these are going to look like. It's always such a fun surprise since I never know where I'm going. <laughs> Keeps things exciting. So I'm going to just do a little coil, dip it in the water, and wrap it around there. And then we're fitted. Plus then it makes our stem look a little beefier. Not quite so fragile. And I'll add some flowers and some leaves up here too. Because you got it right. Come on. Got to over decorate it. <laughs> I am very big about over decorating so that I'm cussing the thing when I go to glaze it. <laughs> All right. So I could either. Nope. But I do like. I kind of bend them over to the side. So that they hang kind of straight. So, but if we did, something like that, I think I've got too long here. Then actually now it looks like a gourd. It looks more like a gourd with the kind of like a pumpkin stem. Sandwich those together, and then I'm just going to give it a spot to rest on. You know, let's get some vines. So I've got another little coil, and we're just going to wrap around there so it looks like. There, I like that. We'll give it a little extra strength too. Make sure it's looking good on the other side. And it's not. <laughs> and we'll push that down. There we go. That's better. That's awfully cute. I do say so myself. All right, so we decided that this was the front. Ooh, you know what? I wonder if we need a flower. We continue with the flower theme. And make our hole with the flower. And then for the, those of you out there who think my holes are too big, this will be a little smaller. <laughs> so I'm just going to use that to mark. Now I'm going to come around and cut it out. I 
And I think I'm going to put a hole so I can put a branch. This one needs a branch. So I'll either like, I'll glue in a dowel after the fact or find a branch to put in it for a perch. But it does need an awning. Okay. I'm actually I'm gonna get my finger in there, make sure I don't have any sharp edges. Cute, 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 cute. All right. Now I need more clay. <laughs> I just rolled this out on the slab, and it's three eighths, but it's thicker than I want it to be. If you want to get your clay thinner, just do this to it for a while, and then it thins it out for you. So. I am also using, we've used them before with Michael, these are Michael Harbridge's leaves and I'll put them in the description. These are the hydrangeas and if you'll notice they look like hearts. They're quickly becoming one of my favorites. So you press them into the clay and then you tear them off the edges. Then it looks more realistic. It's still, the clay is still thicker in the, um, in the majority of the leaf, but the edges are thinner. And so it doesn't look quite so chunky, like how sometimes if you're just cutting with a cookie cutter or, it just looks better. I just love them. I'm absolutely in love with these leaves. I have so many of them. Okay, so you've got it super thin there and fairly thick because we need an awning. You know, I might not decorate this one too much, mainly because I've spent so much time already decorating um, the whole thing's got texture all over it and I don't want to take away from the texture either. So, we'll just maybe just give it an awning. So it's got shade to get into the little hole. Let me bring that down just a little bit. Kind of joining that heart there. And I'm going to go in and wipe away my score lines, but also wipe away the slip because the slip is what's going to crack on you. So, hold on. Let's get that up just a little bit. an idea. like the idea of maybe doing a vine here, you know? So if we did a vine, it'll Give me some support right here. 
for that leaf. And then I know I'm going to have my little hole here. For my... Sometimes your hands are too... Your fingers are too big to get into places. And then we'll join this right here so it looks like it's leaf is coming right out. Pressing this really well in and then I'll come in with my little tool and make sure that I'm not too worried about coils. If I press them in, then I can get them usually to stay and then go around with a paintbrush. If your clay is all the same dryness, sometimes they'll lift off, but I usually don't have too much of a problem because I do spend some time going over them with the paintbrush like this. Okay, so rule of thumb, I've got two things here, and it doesn't look finished. So I'm going to add a third thing. I like things in um, odd numbers. <laughs> I, I, there's nothing, I mean, it, nature is not symmetrical. And so I tend to, when I build things, I tend not to be too symmetrical and I tend to stick with odd numbers. So this is a fondant mold for hydrangea. I've got a hydrangea leaf. So I figure we do some hydrangea flowers. So, maybe not. I always use cooking spray on my silicone molds. You can use some um, cornstarch, but I have found that cooking spray for me tends to work better. So I think the reason why I don't didn't really everything's round. So I think I prefer the round flower over the hydrangea flower. So let's see. We'll make a few and then decide. Yeah, I like hydrangea. So I'll come in here and I'll put in a bunch of flowers. My handiest tool for this 
is a pin that no longer writes and I will press the middle and, and it presses them in so that they stay better. But I still will handle it very, very carefully <laughs> until it is glaze fired. So much for keeping this one simple. And I'm going to need some flowers up top. Kind of balance it off, I think. So let's do that real quick. And let's go ahead with Oh, there we go. I like that. You can get really carried away. I always do. <laughs> but they're super fun. Pretty much everything I do in the studio is super fun. That's why I love my job. I've got the best job in the world. Hardly ever stresses me out. I don't think I ever get stressed out <laughs> out here. This is where I come to battle stress. <laughs> I've got a helicopter flying overhead. I wonder what's up. Usually that's not good. We have avalanches um, going on. Snowpack is melting and it's melting too fast. It's raining today, which is not helping the situation. I know all sorts of parts of the country are flooding. We're flooding. I tell you, really, really glad we're up on a bench here, but worried about my neighbors. My husband's actually been out sandbagging with helping neighbors sandbag, and because the houses below me are in a natural wash, we have two reservoirs there, and they're both full. And uh, they're draining them, trying to get the water out for the snowpack actually really starts coming down. So it's going to get interesting around here. Grateful for the water, but let's just hope it doesn't melt too fast in the mountains. But I do know that we've been having avalanches because the snow's melting. So, should we do it there? I think I do it there.
push those flowers down on the leaf. Okay. Let's push these guys down too so that they don't get knocked. We might need a couple more leaves. We can spend hours on these things. I love making them, hate glazing them, but uh, a lot of work goes involved in all of these. So if you're making stuff like this to sell, make sure that you're compensating yourself. Usually in order, because I enjoy making these, but you really can't sell them for the amount of time that you have into them. <laughs> um, at least not in my area, I don't think. Let's see. Okay, I like that. Whoops. Be helpful. I actually scored there too. So I will make other things that don't take as much time that like pendants don't take me very much time and people are used to paying 15 20 dollars for jewelry and so pendants help me to where i can justify making these <laughs> justify all the time that i spend on these guys So think about that if you're selling pottery, what items that you can, that will help offset your time on these guys. Because that's definitely something you need to think about. And use my little pin. So I'm gonna set that down on the, Am I done? <laughs> I should be done. Watch me, I'll keep messing with it. <laughs> okay, we'll do one more leaf. Maybe two more leaves. I see another spot where I can do a leaf. And since we've got four flowers, we will do one more flower here. Because I like my odd numbers. Okay, so still gonna put my hole. Well, maybe I won't. Okay. 
kind of move my let's move my flower over just a touch and then I will put my hole right here so I can put my branch in later. Okay, that turned into much more of a class than I had planned on. <laughs> Hand building takes so much longer than wheel thrown. But this turned out super fun, super cute. I really like you. So I will let this stiffen up and then I will put the drain holes in here and uh, put it under plastic. And then I have another one to do later. <laughs> so I guess I know what I'm doing with my afternoon. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will be doing, um, a lot of you did want to see the um, owl penny banks. And hopefully, I think I'm glazing the hedgehogs this week. So I might have a kiln opening to show you with the hedgehogs soon. If I get um, everything done that I need to do. <laughs> or everything that I want to do. And I have a Memorial Day sale that I have every year at the studio here. And so a lot of my stuff is being made since, of course, you know, last year I couldn't make a lot of stuff because of the uh, multiple knee surgeries. Man, I could just mess with this for hours. <laughs> you're going to have to tell me if, if you're like that, if you just mess with it and keep adding and adding and adding. Or um, I think the key they said about is, is for art is to know when to stop. <laughs> Some of us have problems with that. Mainly because we're enjoying ourselves so much, we don't want to stop. Why do you want to stop? There's dishes inside and laundry and, and um, all this other stuff to do. So why would you want to stop doing clay? <laughs> anyway, I hope you're having a great day. hope you have a great weekend. And I hope you can go and get muddy. See you later.